Good afternoon and good morning to everyone. Thank you for joining for today's presentation on accessibility. The session today will be presented by myself, Greg Lutz. Um, I have over 12 years of experience um, in the uh, industry. Um, I'm very well versed as a, a consultant, but I'm also a uh, on-staff instructor. Um, I have a very broad range of experience and expertise in Microsoft Office, Windows, SharePoint, Adobe, Macromedia, and the list goes on and on and on. Um, it says I've got excellent presentation and interpersonal skills, um, and uh, I try to ensure that uh, the class is uh, best for my students and very pleasant. Um, if you've taken classes with me before, then you know what to expect of me. Uh, if you got questions, please don't hesitate. Questions are good. Questions are the only way that other people learn as well as yourself. Um, a lot of times, I'll be very blunt and honest with you guys, a lot of your questions are not unique. Um, it's the same thing that I've heard year after year after year. So when you have questions, let me know. Um, you know, I, I can guess uh, a little bit uh, as to different questions that you guys will have. Um, but for real specific things that you, uh, you're you just dying to know, let me know. And especially with today, this stuff is so new. This stuff is so different um, that uh, there may be different things that you have questions on or, or different things that you, uh, uh, you're you not familiar with. Uh, so stop me, let me know, and uh, we can talk about different things. But like I said, um, because it's so new, uh, I have an idea of some of the questions you might have, uh, but I've also got lots of resources for you as well, because uh, in an hour and a half, it's not really going to cover um, everything that you could talk about with accessibility. I mean, it's just uh, there's so many features now. There's so many products that are on the market, uh, aftermarket products. Um, even Microsoft has hardware and, and different things that you can purchase from Microsoft itself. So um, there's a lot to this stuff. With that said, um, I'm going to take you through a, a bit of a presentation, but at the same time, I'm also going to be going into the different products and showing you exactly what it is that I'm talking about. Uh, that way, you get to see what I'm talking about, you can see where it is in the menus, and uh, if you want to follow along with your own computer, you're more than welcome to. Um, if not, you can go ahead and, and uh, take notes, uh, and like I said, uh, there's a couple of resources that uh, I'll give you guys at the end of all this that uh, I've found uh, quite handy. Um, so with that said, let's get into the presentation. I'll turn my camera on so you guys can see what it looks like. Um, makes it a little bit more personal as well. All right. I'm just going to share out uh, my desktop here. So I'm going to share the whole thing. That way you guys can see everything that I'm doing. I'm going to be flipping back and forth between uh, the different products and um, and Windows itself. Accessibility. Uh, this is the outline that we're going to go through. We're going to talk about what it is, who uses it, and uh, how they uh, they do use the features. Um, we'll talk about accessibility in Windows 7, Word 2010, Excel 2010, PowerPoint 2010, and we'll also talk about planning accessibility. Windows 7 comes with something called the Ease of Access Center. The idea of it is that you can set up little quick things, um, little things to set up uh, a microphone, screen reader, um, increase the contrast. You see, a lot of times when somebody uh, has visual disabilities, um, they can't see the screen all that well, you have different features in Windows that allows them to see the screen a little bit better. Um, if they uh, can't see it all, uh, there's lots of audio things 
that uh, can be done to let them know that things are happening on the screen, things are happening uh, within the program. There's also a questionnaire that you can go through. The questionnaire really does help you set up somebody's computer so that it's tailored to the way that they work. So the different challenges that they have to get their job done, there's different questions they answer, and it'll turn different features on and turn different features off. It'll be quite useful and helpful. But most of the features are found in accessories in the Ease of Access Center. Let me show you. So let me get out of here. I'll go to my Start button. Right? So bottom left-hand side, Windows 7, you hit your Start button. You can go to All Programs. Inside All Programs, there's a yellow file folder for accessories. They always change what's in here with every version of Windows. Inside here, you've got a lot of different things um, that can help you out. Um, however, there is another section. It's called the Ease of Access. And this is where some of your Ease of Access tools sit. There's the Ease of Access Center. This is kind of a central page that will get you into all the different accessibility features. So if you're looking for the narrator, if you're looking for um, text-to-speech um, or speech-to-text, that's where you're going to find all this stuff generally. If I open up the Ease of Access Center, you'll see what I mean. As you can uh, possibly hear, um, it actually reads out the uh, section aloud and always scans the section. So if you do have a screen reader, um, it's going to read it out. If not, it's going to read it anyways. You can, st you can start the magnifier. Um, the magnifier allows you to, uh, let me just uncheck this. Um, when you start the magnifier, it will magnify a portion of the screen. Now, you can have it do a portion of the screen, <coughs> excuse me, or you, <coughs> sorry, you can have it magnify a portion of the screen, you can have it magnify the whole screen, or you can dock it on the left-hand side, uh, or the right-hand side, and just have it sit there as a magnifier, so you can put different things underneath it to see it. So it, it, it really depends on the person. You can also start the on-screen keyboard. The on-screen keyboard works very similar to iPhone keyboards, uh, their on-screen keyboard, um, Android uh, tablets and uh, uh, keyboards as well. They try and predict your text as you type. The on-screen keyboard does the same thing. Sorry. There's also a narrator. The narrator will read anything that's on the screen. So if you open up um, Word, if you open up a web page, anything like that, the narrator is going to read everything that it can see. You can also set up high contrast. This is what I was talking about when I said that you could change different Windows features to make it easier for people to see the screen or to see different things on the screen. Um, there are lots of different colors that you really shouldn't use. Uh, you should never use red, you should never use green, you should never use yellow. These are very difficult colors for people to see, believe it or not. Um, if you think about a presentation, right, you ever see yellow in a presentation up on a projector? It looks terrible. Uh, it's very hard to read. It's very difficult, especially if it's a white background. Screen readers and narrators use contrast. so. If you're trying to jazz things up, you're best to do it with textures and contrast rather than actual color. So, unfortunately, when we talk about accessibility, we're talking about taking a lot of fancy things out. Um, there are a lot of things that will throw off screen readers, narrators. Um, they don't work so well. When you set up the high contrast, it what they're really talking about is black and white. So the absolute best document that you create, the best web page that you create, unfortunately, would be a black and white web page. Um, 
it makes it easier for the screen readers and makes it easier for people that um, do have partial visibility um, to see different things on the screen. So when you add color, sometimes you mess stuff up. Um, this is where you can get recommendations. A um, little questionnaire that it, uh, it'll take you through. Now, you can use the uh, computer without a display. This way, everything becomes audible. Um, it's all audio, everything. Every click, um, every time something happens, uh, there's all these different uh, sounds uh, that, uh, that come up and um, uh, gives you a bit of feedback. You can optimize the visual display and really, they're just talking about the contrast, setting up the contrast, um, and changing the resolution as well. Um, as we get larger and larger monitors, the resolution gets finer and finer. Um, I don't know about you, but uh, depending on the resolution, sometimes it's very difficult to read things. Uh, so um, even myself, sometimes I have to change the resolution because it's way too hot. Um, when you change it, when you make it uh, a larger res resolution, uh, there's more dots on the screen, so it looks like everything's going smaller, right? You can use the computer without a mouse or a keyboard. You can set up alternative devices. There's lots of different alternative devices nowadays. Um, Microsoft makes hardware, and there's lots of other alternative companies, too. <laughs> you can make the keyboard easier to use. These are things like uh, sticky keys. Let me show you. If I click onto it, I can take you into the accessibility features here. Um, I can turn on these uh, uh, mouse keys. It uses a numeric pad. Unfortunately, if you're using a laptop, you don't have a numeric pad. Um, and some keyboards nowadays don't have it either. You can also make it easier to type by using sticky keys. Sticky keys um, make uh, different keyboard shortcuts a little bit more accessible. If the person can't ha hold down more than one key at a time, use sticky keys. And that way, instead of holding down Control Alt Delete, um, you press Control, you press Alt, you, then you press Delete, and it's as if you've pressed them all at the same time. There's different toggle keys that you can turn on. Um, so I actually don't mind this myself. If you accidentally hit the cap locks, it makes a sound. So it lets you know that cap lock is on. And then if you hit it again, it lets you know that you've turned it off. Same with lum lock and uh, your scroll lock as well. You can turn on the uh, toggle keys by holding down the num lock for five seconds. And that way you can toggle back and forth if you want to turn it on and turn it off. Filter keys are in case you accidentally press um, two keys uh, at once, um, double tapping a... Uh, uh, a letter, a space bar. It's basically unintended keystrokes. It tends to filter it out. So um, it'll ignore uh, some of your typing patterns. You can underline the keyboard shortcuts and access keys all the time. This is one of the things that I'll show you a little bit later on, but you can access your keyboard shortcuts with a keystroke. The old ones still work the same. Control, you know, C, Control V, Control X, copy paste. Um, all the old keyboards work, keyboard shortcuts work, but there's new ones now. And there's quite a lot. So if somebody has uh, difficulty using a mouse, the keyboard shortcuts are amazing. A lot more than there ever used to be. That's the uh, making the keyboard easier to use. I'm going to use my breadcrumbs up top here, and I'll click on the ease of access center to take me right back. There are some other settings that I kind of glossed over a little bit. The keyboard is the one that I wanted to introduce to you first, but you can also use the computer without a display. So if the person can't see, no sense in having a display, you've got to set it up. So what this will do is it'll turn the narrator on for them reads out the text. Um, obviously, they'll need speakers or a headset. Um, in most office environments, a headset would be preferred. You can turn on the auto descriptor, and that way you, you can hear descriptions of what's happening in videos when it's available. 
This is not available in every video. Um, if people are shooting video themselves, there's no description in the video. Um, YouTube has an interesting closed caption feature that when you upload videos to YouTube, um, you can now uh, add closed captioning to it uh, as well, which is interesting. So there's a lot of uh, different tools that are now starting to show up that help you with the audio description. There's a link here to set up the whole text-to-speech. Um, I click on it. Here, like it says, uh, text-to-speech. You can control the voice property, the speed, the whole bit. Uh, right now, it's uh, Anna that's going to read to me. Um, I could load in um, other personalities if I wanted to, um, even different accents as well. I can... I can hear Anna's voice if she speaks a little bit too fast for me. And I can slow it down. You can change the audio output. Uh, there's also some advanced features uh, for the audio that you can play with as well. Let me get out of there. You can adjust time limits. Um, turn off all the unnecessary animations. Uh, there's really no accessibility issues with the animations. It's just that if they don't see it, if they can't see it, it's a waste of processing power. It's, um, uh, it takes a little bit longer to open the menus when they're animated. Instead of it just opening, it kind of fades in, fades out, or rolls out, rolls in. It's, lots of different animations that you might not even notice. How long should different notification boxes stay open for? So if there are different notifications, uh, one will pop up and then go away, uh, how long should they stay up for? Five seconds, seven seconds, 10 seconds, a minute, five minutes? There's also different audio devices that you can hook up and configure for, uh, uh, for this. Uh, there's also different sound themes that you can specify as well. Uh, that uh, just give you extra feedback. Because I have Java installed, Java Access Bridge is here. If I enable the Access Bridge, um, it allows me to use some of the assistive uh, technology that's found in different Java applications. So screen readers, closed captioning, descriptions, uh, all that stuff is also uh, in different Java applications. Let me get out of here. So I'll go back to uh, my ease of access center. The uh, display, you can make it easier to see. So you can turn on high contrast uh, when you use different keyboard shortcuts and also display a warning message and a sound when you turn it on. You'll find that there are a lot of accessibility features that are redundant. Um, they show up in multiple places. Typical Microsoft, right? They give you lots of spots to find the exact same tool. There's the narrator, audio description, your magnifier. Um, something you may not realize is you can change your focus rectangle. Um, when you fill out a form, you might realize it, you might not, but there's a rectangle that follows you around. It has a very thin border. And in so certain forms, it'll actually highlight the field. You can make the, make the rectangle thicker. You navigate using your tab key. In fact, that's actually how screen readers work, is they use a tab control. Your blinking cursor, the flashing eye bar, um, you could set the thickness of it, make it a little bit thicker so they can see the flashing eye bar that's waiting for them to type. You see it in different forms and stuff. Again, you can turn off all unnecessary animation. Uh, you can remove the background images. Uh, have you noticed that your windows in Windows 7 are transparent? Uh, you, you can actually see different windows that are in behind, even the toolbar at the bottom. 
is transparent. You really see it if uh, you watch a video and you watch the video full screen and then something pops up or whatever. Uh, your toolbar is actually transparent. You can see through it. That's part of the background images. There's different programs, uh, different things that have background images. And if, if there's a background image, it messes with screen readers. Screen readers are like black and white. That's it. You got something going on in the background, that creates problems. And once again, Java Access Bridge right at the bottom. Let's go back to the ease of access center. You can use the computer without a mouse or a keyboard. You can use the on-screen keyboard. Um, you can also use speech recognition as well. The on-screen keyboard uh, is pretty intelligent. Um, it's pretty slick. As I said, it uh, predicts what you're going to type um, as you're typing it. And uh, just like any of that assistive technology, um, sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong. For speech recognition, this actually works really well. With speech recognition, there's a whole thing to it. You can start uh, speech recognition, and um, there's a whole little setup thing that it takes you through. Uh, you can also set up your microphone so you can adjust uh, the levels on your microphone. I'll be dead honest with you. There's no reason to set that up. Um, not really. You can adjust the levels if you want, but it's going to adjust automatically. Um, it doesn't work like it used to. Before, you, you, to set up a microphone on a computer, like in Windows 95 or something like that, you, you kind of had to know what the heck you were doing, to be honest. Uh, you had to understand... Um, uh, you had to understand how the microphone worked. And there were different settings that made your voice sound good and different settings that made your voice sound bad. So, you set up your microphone. Now, you don't really have to do that so much. Um... I wouldn't spend a whole lot on a microphone. I, I would get one that doesn't come with the computer. Right? Keep in mind, there's a price point that they're trying to hit with the computer. So your microphone, different input devices like a video camera, it may not be the best. The aftermarket, you can usually get better. But I wouldn't spend more than 20 bucks on a headset, to be honest, or a microphone. There is the uh, speech tutorial. Uh teach you how to use it. There's different words that you have to learn um, to open up a, a window, to close window, to open up a program or close the program. So there is a, a set of commands that you're going to have to learn. And much like any of these voice recognition programs, you need to train your computer to understand you better. So you're going to have to sit, spend some time, uh, and read out a, a sentence over and over and over again. The more time you spend with this, um, the, uh, the better it is. They also have a speech reference card. So the basic commands, dictation, that's what this is. Slowly but surely. I'll connect on, I help. Um, so, yeah, dictation, uh, the common speech recognition commands, this is what I was talking about here. So to click any item, right, you can say file, start, view, um, so you can uh, speak its name. Uh, you can click any item, recycling bin, computer, uh, click, and then whatever the file name is, double click, switch to a program. Like I said, a bit of dictation that... Uh, a few commands that you're going to have to learn. As far as the dictation goes, uh, again, there's a, a few tips that they've got to, you know, just uh, inserting lines, tabs, go to a certain word. If you've used drag and speak before, this, this is no different than drag and speak. Uh, so same thing. Any uh, punctuation marks, special characters, right? They're pretty straightforward. I mean, they are what they are. So as long as you know the proper name for them, you just speak the proper name. There's different controls that are available to you. 
you know, going into the file edit view menu, um, saving, bolding, again, clicking, double clicking, click a numbered item, double click a numbered item. In Windows, your speech commands that you have are things like opening programs, switching to a program, closing a program, uh, minimizing and maximizing different screens, um, restoring, cut, copy, paste. So, all the common stuff that you do all the time. You can scroll up, scroll down, go to a certain field. And uh, as far as clicking anywhere on the screen, um, you can show a mouse grid. And that way, uh, there's a grid that shows up on the screen, and then you uh, move the mouse to uh, the particular uh, area that you want to get to. Let me close my windows, help and support. That was all about speech recognition. Let's go back to the Ease of Access Center. Before I continue, any questions at all? All right. Let's keep going. Uh, a little bit further down, I mean, you know, I won't take you through the mouse and the keyboard options. Obviously, you know, there's all these different things that you can do with it. Um, you can use text or visual alternatives. So I could turn on visual notifications, um, flash the active uh, bar, flash the active window, flash the desktop. Uh, you can turn on text uh, captions for uh, the spoken dialogue. And once again, there's audio and uh, themes that you can get into. I'll go back to the ease of access. Uh, last but not least, you can make it easier to focus on tasks. Once again, it's presenting you with a list of different accessibility features um, that kind of satisfy the title, focusing on the task. The narrator, background images, your sticky keys, toggle keys, filtering, turning on the visuals. How long should Windows stay up? Um, this one's interesting, though, and this is why I took you here. You can make it easier to manage the Windows by preventing Windows from being automatically arranged when moved to the edge of the screen. Uh, once again, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but did you know you can do stuff like this? Let me uh, let me take Excel. Here I'm clicking on the title bar of Excel. If I click on the title bar of Excel, I can click, drag, and pull down into the center of my window, and now it's a, um, a restored window, right? It's kind of, uh, kind of minimized in a sense. Well, you can take the window, and you can slam it to the left-hand side of your screen. When you do that, it automatically splits the screen. Uh, well, it starts to anyways. Uh, the program takes up half of the screen, and then I can take something else. Um, like uh, say my absolute favorite program in the world OneNote and I can drag that to the right hand side and now I've got my list of keyboard shortcuts and I've got Excel open up and I can start working with Excel and start working with my different keyboard shortcuts but some people don't like that uh, especially if you're having a difficult time um, dragging things across the window and navigating across the window uh, you don't want it to just automatically snap to the side, and, and you know now you've got to unsnap it. So this would prevent Windows from doing something like that. And once again, you've got speech recognition, and there's my Java Access Bridge. I'll go back to the Ease of Access Center. So this is pretty much everything within the Ease of Access Center. The only thing I really haven't shown you is these things. The magnifier, the narrator you saw right away, you all heard right away, uh, 
on-screen keyboard and high contrast. If I start the magnifier, I've seen people actually start this uh, accidentally, but uh, if I start the magnifier, what it's going to do is it's going to give me a toolbar and it's going to magnify wherever my mouse pointer is. So this is where I was saying that it docks it, right, at the top of the screen. If I click onto it, my toolbar shows up that has my magnifier. I can zoom in using the plus, but you can also zoom in by using your Windows key and the plus on your keyboard. Obviously, to zoom out, it would be the minus. The view that we're looking at, um, if I click on docked, right, that's the view. Next to it is um, settings, little cog that's there. This is how much the view changes when you're zooming in, zooming out. I could turn on color inversion, which uh, makes the contrast between two objects uh, much greater and easier to see. It'll follow the mouse pointer, follow my focus. Um, I can have the magnifier follow the text insertion point. I can fine tune what everything looks like. I can control um, whether the magnifier starts when I log in. If you're looking to, um, uh, if you're looking to close this thing, right? I click on the toolbar. The toolbar closes it, but you can also hold your Windows key and Escape, and Windows key and your Escape key will also close the magnifier. I keep talking about your on-screen keyboard. If I click on the on-screen keyboard, it is what it is. Um, you've probably seen something like this, hopefully, maybe. Um, it's a keyboard. Your backspace, your delete is on here. Uh, you got your print screen button. Um, you do have an options button, which uh, opens up all the different options for the keyboard. So I can turn on the numeric keypad. Um, I can use the on-screen keyboard by clicking on the keys, or I could hover over top, or just scan through. So depending on the dexterity of the person, um, all they have to do is just hover over top, if that's easy and simple for them to do or if they'd much rather scan through and go through each line on the keyboard, if that's easier, that's fine too. I won't change anything. I'll just hit cancel, and I'll get out of there. And I'll close this down too. I don't need my on-screen keyboard. Setting up high contrast. Um, it really has to do with the Windows themes. Let me show you what I mean. Let me close all this stuff down. All right. If I right click on my desktop, and I go to personalize, there is a um, a section that's here towards the bottom, right? You've got your themes, your arrow themes, and your installed themes. Well, if I keep going down, eventually, these are the different contrast ones that I was talking about. When I was a kid growing up, this is the way the computers looked. Like this. It looks weird. It looks different. Um, but I'll guarantee you, if you sit here all day long staring at this, that'll be a lot easier on your eyes than a white screen, white background. Your white background, um, it messes with your eyes. It's too bright. And now with uh, all these new screens, bright screens that are coming out, uh, this just kills your eyes. So if you're sitting here 8, 10, 12 hours a day looking at a screen, you may want to consider a high contrast screen. That's how I grew up. You got basic, classic windows that uh, you can choose from. Um, it's the when you choose these, though, you lose all the animation. 
So any of that funky animation uh, that you used to use, it, it doesn't work anymore. Let me show you what I mean, just in case you're not sure. If I go back to the Windows 7, the default, right? One of the neat things that you can do, you can hold your Windows key down, hit your Tab key at the same time, and it um, puts all the windows on an angle. Now, it's not going to do it while I'm in WebEx and, and sharing all this stuff, so um, that's animation is kind of limited that way. But on yours, if you hold your Windows key down, hit your Tab key at the same time, as long as you're using one of these arrow themes, uh, it does some pretty cool things. You keep hitting your tab key, and eventually you find the window that you want, and let go of the Windows key. It's brilliant. But the reason I brought you in here, high contrast. Let me get out of there. I'll go back to my presentation. Before I get into the presentation, any questions at all? Questions, comments, concerns, accusations, anything. All right, then. Let's keep going. Uh, so, we just took a look at the Ease of Access Center. And the idea is that the Ease of Access Center is going to um, help you set up your computer so that it will work a little bit uh, easier, a little bit uh, better for the person. Um, there's that little questionnaire that you can go through, and it'll suggest different things and uh, really and truly help them out. Now for Word. In Word 2010, they developed the Backstage. The Backstage is when you click on File. That's the te technical name for it. Uh, they call that the Backstage. Anyways, the Backstage is supposed to be a little bit more user-friendly because they have different categories, different sections, and they have something called the Accessibility Checker. Let me show you. Uh, so I'm going to open up a, a copy of Word here. When I open up Word, I'll just adjust this so that it uh, looks like the default. When you open up Word and you have a document, you can check the document for accessibility. So if I go to File, um, Inside File, you have this thing called Info. In Info, there is a button. It's called Check for Issues. And here is the accessibility option. It checks uh, for accessibility of the document. That opens up as a panel. The panel shows up on the right-hand side, and it constantly runs. So as you add different things to the document, it'll keep inspecting your document. Now, it won't inspect it if you haven't turned it on. You have to tell it to inspect the document. It's not going to just volunteer stuff. So, I have a document, and I can put in my, my title. Right? As you can see, no issues with it. If I had to insert, though, and I choose, say, clip art, And let's look for uh, let's look for a nice fall picture. I'm looking at all media types. I'll include office.com. I'll hit go. It'll take a quick look for me. So I find what I'm looking for. I click on the photograph. It takes a minute, but it picks it up. It shows me that you're missing text. If somebody has um, 
a visual disability where they can't see this picture or they can't see it that well, they'll be using a screen reader. The screen reader has no issues with uh, my first document. It's text. It's also black on white. It's perfect. It's brilliant. It's got a problem with this, though. It's missing the alternative text. For those of you that used to create websites, remember the alternative text that you had to fill out um, for graphics? There was really no other reason to fill that out other than somebody turned off graphics in their web browser. And if they turn off graphics in their web browser, it was just a nice courtesy to tell them what they were missing. I never filled it out. I put graphics on websites all the time, and I, was, I never filled it out. Um, if they didn't have graphics turned on the, on their web browser, well, then what use is it me telling you that you're missing a photograph that you don't want to see anyways? So I never filled it out. I never saw the need for it, to be honest. Now, all of those alternative texts and descriptions that you're seeing, you need to fill those out. If you don't fill those out, your document's not accessible. You have to fill them out. On the photograph, if I right-click on it, when I right-click on it, I can insert a caption, I can wrap text around it, I can do all these wonderful things, but I just want to format the picture. When you go to format the picture, you got to fill the color, there's little picture corrections that you can do, whatever, but at the bottom, on the left-hand side, is the alternative text. Now, I don't want to get too technical with this stuff, but if, if it's a Microsoft-based product, it'll read the title and the description. Most of the products that I work with don't read titles. Most of the products that I work with only read the descriptions. So, believe it or not, the description is more important than the title. Have, have you ever um, watched a program where they said that uh, descriptive audio is available for this program? Notice they didn't say descriptive title. Well, that's why. Everything's based on uh, descriptions. So, this description doesn't tell anybody anything. Tells me where I got it. Tells me where it sits on my computer. So instead, fill out your descriptions properly. And that way, hopefully, um, if they're using a, a screen reader, they'll be able to pick the description up. You can still fill out a title if you want. Uh, in fact, my suggestion, fill out both. Always fill out the title. Always fill out the description. But the description is the most important stuff. So spend some time with it. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? No questions whatsoever? All right, let's carry on. I'll go back to my PowerPoint presentation. So, if you have to work with documents, you're going to want to turn on accessibility. When you turn on accessibility with a document, it opens up on a panel, and as you work, um, it'll continually check stuff. I'll show you one more thing. I'll go back to Word. We just did a picture. If I go back to Word, I'll take the picture out. Instead, I'm going to insert a table. When you insert the table, you'll notice that Microsoft breaks the accessibility into two different uh, spots, errors and warnings. So on the right-hand side, your errors, missing alternative text table, so it's missing the alt text. Um, there's no header row that's been specified, and um, there's blank rows within the table. Just like Excel, you can't have blank rows. You can't have blank columns. You can't have blank cells. If you have blank columns and blank rows and blank cells, it actually messes with it. 
So even if it's a zero, fill it out as a zero. Don't leave it as blank. I know you can't always do that, but mm, just in case. Just in case you can, fill it out. Uh, so let's see. I'll have name, address, and phone number. Um, formatting the table really does help, but like I said, you want to format it in some sort of a high contrast um, way. Um, I can specify my header row. There's blank rows within the table, so if I fill this out, you'll notice my different errors are going away. If I right click on the table, when I right click on the table, here again, you've got uh, all your, your typical stuff, text direction, all that jazz. Eventually, I get in my table properties. In the table properties, um, again, you've got very typical things, uh, stuff for your rows. You repeat the header row at the top of each page and stuff like that. Right? Same with the column, your cells, and finally, your alternative text. So eventually, all your problems will go away. Let me get out of there. I'll go back to my presentation. Any questions before I do? Questions? Comments? Anything? All right. Let's keep going. So the next thing is really neat. Um, Office has a uh, an add-in. Word has an add-in. It's called Daisy. Uh, save as Daisy. The Save as Daisy allows you to save documents in a open XML format, um, so that you can save it as Daisy XML. Daisy XML is what all these talking um, books that you can get. That's the format. That's like a, a standard format. Um, you can get it uh, online at the uh, the marketplace, Microsoft Marketplace, and, uh, and download it. Um, fairly simple to install. It, you know, double click, pull out a next, and then finish, and it shows up as an add-on. Um, you have lots of different features with it, so there's some pretty cool things that you can do. Uh, Make sure that when you do put different things in documents that you're describing shapes, pictures, tables, graphics. Um, be as descriptive as you can. Um, you've got the title, you've got the description. Spend a lot of time on the description. Title is what it is. Spend your time on the description. If you're going to create um, PDFs, then you're going to have to learn how to tag PDFs. You're going to have to learn how to tag stuff. Unfortunately, that's a whole other subject. Um, in fact, it's actually a whole other class. Tagging PDFs um, can be pretty labor intensive, quite honestly. Uh, Adobe has a lot of different products that help you do it on mass. So if you're serious about it, you may want to take a look at some of the Adobe products like Lifecycle and Workbench. It might help you out with some of the automation of it. Uh, tag PDFs um, make it easier for people to read. Um, it describes different things. It makes it easier for screen readers to read. So screen readers know what direction to go and how to read different tables and alternative text that should be read uh, before something else. So it helps with uh, reading order, um, the navigation of the file. Um, 
So they know to, to read this table and then to read this next table. Um, as well as allowing for content reflow when you've got large types of displays. You know, again, I probably don't have to tell you, but um, when you're looking at a web page on a mobile phone, you're looking at a web page on uh, an iMac 27-inch monitor, they look different. They look very different. Uh, very pleasing on a 27-inch monitor. Uh, not so pleasing on a, a you know a tiny little uh, iPhone or uh, or BlackBerry screen. You, know, you got to admit, 27-inch, uh, it's going to look different. The layout's going to be different. They got a lot more space to play with. Um, tagging, it helps with all that. It it helps to that when things shift and, and move around the screen, um, that it reflows properly. Excel, same thing, pretty much. You want to add alternative text uh, to images and objects. You want to specify the column uh, information in the tables, column header information. So, uh, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. Uh, you want to ensure that all your uh, um, I've got slides in here, but uh, we want to ensure that all of your um, uh, sheets have unique titles. When they're navigating sheets, don't leave it as sheet one, sheet two, sheet three. Describe it. Uh, come up with a, a creative name for that sheet. Um, believe me, it'll uh, make your life a little bit easier. Uh, use simple table structure. Don't create these complicated tables that have merged cells and things like that. When you merge cells, Screen readers hate it. They don't like merge cells. They have a difficult time reading those things. Avoid using blanks, blank anything. Um, you don't want blank cells uh, in your spreadsheet. If you've got blank cells in your spreadsheet, um, once again, it, it's not going to be able to, to read it correctly, and it may actually throw the reader off, and they may go to the next line and miss a, a ton of data just because um, it just wasn't there. Uh, you also want to include closed captions um, for any audio and video that you include in documents, spreadsheets, presentations, anything like that. There are programs out there that will do that for you. Um, Microsoft products don't kind of don't do that, but when I talk about PowerPoint, we'll get into this again. Um, and color. You really want to focus on color. You want to watch color for any colorblind viewers. To add closed captioning to PowerPoint, there's an add-in for it. It's called Stamp. The Stamp add-in allows you to um, put in closed captions for video and audio files that you've included in your presentation. There's a whole menu and it's a whole other program that you've got to go through. And obviously, it is a little time intensive. I mean, you're having to, um, to basically type all this stuff out. You can add alternative text uh, to images and objects in PowerPoint as well. It's no different. Uh, let me insert a new slide here, just to give you an idea. I'll do clip art. I'll do fall again. So I'll throw in the same picture. All right. Uh, it's no different. Microsoft has really tried to make this consistent throughout the, the entire suite. So um, even though um, I'm just kind of you know, showing you in Word and now I'm showing you here, it's just to prove that it's the same thing. When you right-click on top of the photograph, you can go to Format Picture. And when you format the picture, your alternative text is there. There's your title. And there's your description. You want to be very, very descriptive with it. Um, it says in in here that the title can be read to a person with a disability and is used to determine whether they wish to hear the description of the content or not. Um, not exactly true. Like I said, 
Not all screen readers read the title. Most screen readers skip the title and head right to the description. So food for thought. You really got to think about that. And for layout of tables, it's no different here. You have to include um, titles. You, you can't leave any of the headers blank. If you leave them blank, it's not going to work. If you've got blank rows or blank cells, it's not going to work. Your alternative text is found, same as everything else, by right-clicking on top of it. I can click on Format Shape, so it's a little bit different. You're looking for a paint bucket and a paintbrush each time. And this is where I find my alternative text. Fill out my title, fill out my description. And I know that I keep saying that the title is not all that important. Um, it may change. Screen readers may decide uh, to start reading that. Um, who knows? So that way you don't have to go back to previous documents and add that title. Uh, just do it properly. Fill out the title, fill out the description, and be very, very descriptive. Now, I've tried a lot of this stuff with, um, with tagging with the 2010 documents. And I don't have any issues with 2010, and I don't have any issues with 2007. When I use my old documents, a lot of my 2003 documents, I've had issues with tagging, and I've had issues with accessibility. Um, you may want to take some of your old documents and save them as the DOCX format. You may want to save it as a 25 format. Um, I have had issues with 03. Uh, description's not being read properly, uh, title's not being seen, which is kind of common, uh, but the descriptions threw me off. They didn't show up. PowerPoint is a little inconsistent. Uh, PowerPoint, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. Some of the stuff shows up and some of the stuff doesn't um, for 2003. So it's not as consistent as Word. Word, um, I really have had some, some issues with accessibility. Any questions about accessibility in your workplace? Questions that you might have with accessibility yourself? All right. This is no different. If I go to File, if I go to File here, Inside File is Info, and Inside Info is Check for Issues. Here you can inspect the document. You can also check it for accessibility. Same thing. If I click on the accessibility opens up a panel and lets me know if I have uh, some different issues or not. As you can see, I have some issues with the document. To fix any of the issues, if you don't know exactly where they are, or you've got um, a really large document, I can click, in, I can click on uh, Missing Placeholder, and when I click on it, it gives me additional information. There's even a nice little hyperlink at the bottom there. Read more about making documents accessible. takes you out to uh, their little help file as long as you're connected online. It tells you all about the accessibility checker, how it works. Errors, warnings, tips. Talks about fixing some of the issues and uh, the different rules that the accessibility uh, uses. So how does it determine that it's not accessible? You know, it, it makes sure that all objects 
have alternative text. If it sees any object that doesn't, it, it says no, basically. Tables have to specify column and header information. So if you don't have proper titles on all your different columns, it gets upset. All your slides have titles. They also have to have unique titles as well. So if the person is visually impaired, um, they they know exactly what slide um, and, and the topic of the slide. It's also just good presentation uh, to do stuff like that. Long document styles, uh, headings, uh, different things like that uh, have are, are used um, in the table of contents to help you navigate. So I'll go back to Word here for a second. But the other thing that you have to be aware of when you format your document is if you want it accessible, you can't really be clicking on fonts and choosing fonts this way anymore. When you do that, the computer has no idea what it is that you're actually working with. See, now you've got to start working with styles. With styles, the interesting thing about styles is that when you tell something it's a heading, then it recognizes it as a heading. If you um, tell something that it's a, a, a bulleted list, then it shows you that it's a bulleted list. Here, I'll highlight my document, I'll click on title, right? so it understands that's the title. I can say that uh, this is a uh, my first heading, my second heading, my first subtitle, and this will make sense in a minute. But I can say, yeah, that's a heading. That's also a heading. Now, I didn't make it a heading too, because it's not first heading, second heading, it's the level. So since this is a subtitle, that's a heading level too. To make the document accessible, I've used styles. Because now, if I go to References and I insert a table of contents, that table of contents is tagged. It's tagged properly. It understands that that's the title, that's the different headings, and I've got a subtitle. It's, it's clickable. It, it recognizes it. You might not realize that if you fold your control key down, this stuff's clickable. You can actually click on these different titles and navigate. And as you can see, I have no accessibility issues because I've formatted that way. It makes it easier for screen readers to navigate. It understands this is the first title, this is a subtitle, this is the next title. So if they want to um, navigate a table of contents, it makes it a lot easier and simpler for them. And it will read the table of contents. If you're typing out the title of contents, the screen readers don't read it the same and they don't navigate the same way. I'll close this off. I won't save anything. I'll just bring it right back here. So, quick recap. If you're looking for the speech-to-text, text-to-speech features within the Office products, um, they don't exist for most of them. It's all done through Windows now. So, if you need to navigate, if you need to type out a document, anything like that, um, that's all done through Windows. You find it by going to your Start button. Once you click on your Start button, you head to All Programs. Once you head to All Programs, it's in Accessories. So if I navigate down here to the Accessories File folder, inside the Accessories File folder is Ease of Access. And in the Ease of Access Center is where you find the majority of all the stuff that we talk about. I'll close that down. I'll get out of there. I kind of hesitated with the whole text-to-speech thing a little bit with Office. All of the Office programs use um, the Windows uh, text-to-speech except for one. 
Excel. Excel's got to be different. In Excel, it's hidden, which is really unusual because that was the one thing that they didn't do this this time around. Um, in previous versions, what they would do is they would hide a lot of the different features. So you'd have to know that certain features uh, were available uh, in certain menus or uh, certain toolbars you'd have to open up, um, customize different things, right? Here, you click the pull down arrow for your quick access toolbar, it's in more commands. If I go to all commands, there's just tons of stuff that sits here. Uh, if you haven't done this yet, you got it. You got to go through all the different things that are here. But um, I'll scroll down. called text to speech and I apologize I don't think it's actually installed. I didn't install it yeah I haven't installed it yet anyways uh, it's called text to speech just want to double check and make sure it's not sitting somewhere else it's all alphabetical so it should be there there's my translator, my text function. Oh, sorry. I apologize, guys. Speak cells. My bad. Uh, yeah, speak cells is still here. You speak cells by columns, speak cells by rows. This used to be a whole toolbar. Use your speech toolbar that you would turn on. I don't know what they did, but they... Um, they took the toolbar out, and now you manually have to add this stuff. So if you want to speak the cells and speak uh, an entire table, you're going to have to add this. And you can either add it to the quick access toolbar, or you could create a whole other section on the ribbon and just add it as a section in the ribbon. But if I click OK, now I've got all this stuff. So I can actually get it to speak the cells. So that is different than the rest of the products. The rest of the products, it all works off Windows. So one thing I really wanted to show you guys uh, about Excel uh, was just that one feature is, is different because uh, that was bugging me um, when I was looking for a lot of the accessibility features for the, the products and I wasn't finding them and uh, Excel was the only one that I, I found the accessibility features in and then I realized that uh, it's now all done through Windows. Um, the other thing that I didn't mention is Windows 7 also has touch features as well. Windows 8 is not the only one with touch features. Windows 7 has it too. So, if possible, if a person has a touch screen, touch screens are compatible with Windows 7. Food for thought. Um, I know, once again, different people have trouble with uh, the dexterity of a mouse. You know, using a mouse and, and uh, um, being able to drag and, and move things across the screen for certain people is not simple and is not easy. So, in your work environment, consider touch screens, consider uh, touch pads and alternative devices other than a mouse. A mouse is actually kind of tough for people to use. Any questions whatsoever, guys? No questions, comments. Awesome. I got a question. Closed caption. Uh, Jennifer's got a, a question here. Um, do you recommend any 
specific closed caption add-ons. Uh, the only one I would recommend uh, would be the uh, the one for PowerPoint. Um, other than that, they all basically work the same. Um, I, yeah, they all, they all basically rip one another off. Um, most screen readers work the same. Most dictation programs now work the same. So uh, I used to have you know different favorites and stuff way way back, but not anymore. You know, drag and speak and things like that would, would be the, the go-to applications for me. But um, now they all basically work the same. Like even the one for Windows, it works really really well. You know, I, I got no complaints against it. Uh, we'll be sending out copies of your slides to participants. Um, I don't see an issue with that. I just have to clear that out uh, with my people. But um, yeah, uh, I, we could definitely uh, help facilitate that. Um, you know, as long as we've all got your email addresses, which uh, we should, because you're all registered. So yeah, if you guys uh, if you guys want to copy these slides, uh, no problem at all. In fact. Let me do one thing. Um, I mentioned about different resources and things. Right? Um, I've got a, uh, a bunch of different things uh, that I can give you guys, um, like creating accessible PDFs. Um, it, it's a whole how-to. So I'll put a, a, a bunch of links on the last slide for you guys. So on the last slide um, will be a bunch of different resources for tagging documents, accessibility features, hardware, closed caption add-ons, um, so that you guys will have all that stuff. Any other questions at all? In Excel or Word, is there a keyboard shortcut control plus several before that paper? Uh, kind of seems like the keyboard shortcut doesn't exist. Check this out. Watch this. I am a huge lover of keyboard shortcuts. So let me share my desktop again. And for the heck of it, I'll open up Excel. But this works in any product. I could have done this right in PowerPoint. Um, you want to see keyboard shortcuts on your keyboard? Hit your Alt key. Your Alt key will reveal the first set of keyboard shortcuts. Now on my keyboard, if I hit H for Home, it reveals the rest of the keyboard shortcuts. So let me do it again. I hit my Alt key on my keyboard. The Alt key on my keyboard show, shows me the first set of keyboard shortcuts. Then, if I want to access something like Home, I hit H for Home. It reveals the rest of the keyboard shortcuts for me. Microsoft has compiled a list of keyboard shortcuts. Um, Yeah, I've actually got, uh, sorry, I'm just going through my stuff here. Uh, I've got a list of, uh, of keyboard shortcuts here. Yeah. So I'll give you guys a link for this. And I'll put that, uh, I'll put that on the last slide as well. But yeah, there's keyboard shortcuts for everything. Else. And I got another question here. Same question. Okay. Any other questions? All right. As long as there's no questions. Ladies and gentlemen, I would absolutely love to thank you guys for coming out to today's uh, session. Um, you've been fabulous. Um, honestly, thanks uh, so much. Um, accessibility features is really, really important, guys. So stay on top of it. It's always changing. Um, and uh, 
I have noticed I like some of the accessibility features myself. You know, um, they they are handy things to have. Um, that concludes our audio portion of today's presentations. If you do have any further questions, comments, anything at all, please uh, don't hesitate. Um, you know, uh, give us an email, give us a shout, give us a call, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible, guys. Thank you so much, and uh, enjoy the rest of the day out there. It looks pretty good. Take care, guys.